Hey guys, welcome to another video. Recently we built a retro gaming PC from the year 2000 and I used an LD supermarket PC as a template, basically picking substitute parts to match it as close as possible. In this video we're gonna upgrade that machine and do a before and after test. So the motherboard, there's no need to swap that. Yes, an Intel 815 chipset motherboard uh, is probably more stable and it might be a tiny bit faster, but it's not much and swapping motherboards is a hassle and you might have to reinstall Windows, so we're gonna stay with the same motherboard. We will, however, upgrade the CPU. The LDE came with a Pentium 3 running at 900 megahertz. However, it was the slower 100 megahertz FSB model. So we're going for the Pentium 3 running at one gigahertz with the full 133 megahertz front side bus. We're also gonna upgrade the memory. The LDE PC came with only 128 megabytes of RAM and that was fine in the year 2000 for most games, but in the tests I noticed that some of the loading times were quite extensive and um, especially in the beginning of some levels I could notice some stutters and the hard drive uh, swapping the memory in and out. So we are going with 512 megabytes of RAM courtesy of two sticks from Crucial, 256 megabyte each with a cache latency of two. For gaming, the video card is very important. The LDE came with the GeForce 2MX, which is a very good value card. However, we're gonna go with the top dog, the GeForce 2 GTS. That card is basically double what the GeForce 2MX is. It has double the pixel pipelines, double the texture mapping units, and double the render output units. Also, the clock speed is improved, running at 200 megahertz, and it has DDR memory compared to SDR memory. We're also gonna upgrade the sound. The Aldi PC came with an integrated sound blaster chip on the motherboard, however, it was entirely a software solution. So we're going with a proper PCI sound card. It is the Sound Blaster Live. You just have to insert it into the PCI slot, put in the disk, install all the drivers and the software, and you're good to go. The hard drive was also quite basic, running at only 5,400 RPM. It did have 40 gigabytes of capacity, which was very generous. However, loading times were a little bit sluggish, so we're going with a Samsung Spinpoint 8 gigabyte ID drive, which has 7,200 RPM. I believe that most of these upgrades are period correct and you could go out and buy them at the end of 2000. The hard drive is an exception. I believe the Samsung Spinpoint is a little bit newer from 2003, around about there, but everything else should be available for purchase at the end of the year 2000. So let's have a look at the performance of the upgraded Aldi PC in 3D Mark 99 Max. We're going from around 6000 to 8000 and in 3D Mark 2000 from around 4700 to 7000. Performance in Dark 3D improves nicely. In incoming, we're going from 90.6 to 147.3. In Dracan, from 35.8 to 55.7. And in Expandable, from 54.1 to 77.7. Same goes for OpenGL. In GL, Quake 76.3 to 136.1. In Quake 2, 105.3 to 178.2. And in MDK2, from 50 to 84.9. In Quake 2, in software render mode at 640x480, we're getting a boost from 31.1 to 46.5. So you can clearly see that the 100MHz higher clock speed as well as the higher front side bus results in quite a performance boost regarding the processor. With the faster processor, but mostly with the faster video card, the power draw has increased. Under idle, it's gone up from 35 to 48 and the peak result under 3 d Mark 2000 from 59 to 77. So mostly this is because of the GeForce 2 GTS. It simply draws more power. And I've run all the games again on the upgraded Aldi PC. We've got Starlancer, MechWarrior 4, Colin McRae Rally 2.0, Deus Ex, Aliens vs Predator 2, and No One Lives Forever. NSF everywhere, JC. Your orders are to shoot on sight. A UNATCO informant on the North Dock can get you inside the oh. Identify yourself with the phrase, iron and copper. We're ready to jump out!
Alpha 5, run a long range scan. I'm picking up a slight ion signature reading. Looks like we've had multiple craft passing through this sector. Probably a supply convoy. We better go check up on them. Get a lock on their current position. I got a fix. Jump system online. Enemy detected. Enemy detected. Ouch, that one's gotta hurt. Looks like that's one mech for the trash heap. One of the things I love about the light mech fights is the ferocity of some of these... So let's talk about this upgraded Aldi PC. Out of the box, the machine is good value and you can play most of the games. You're certainly not missing out on any features. For example, you're not stuck with DirectX 6 and you can't play DirectX uh, 7 games. You've got all the latest technology. However, if you had more money and you could afford it and you upgraded a few key components, you can basically get around 50, 60 to 70% higher FPS in games. Getting higher frames per second is very important of course, however we're getting other nice upgrades as well, especially with the storage and with the RAM. The loading times are quite reduced and especially at the beginning of certain uh, games when it loads the level, before we, had, we could see some stutters where the game would just skip and it would take a while for the game to become smooth. That's not the case anymore with the 512 meg of RAM and the faster hard drive. Loading times are good and the game is just smooth from the get go. And we also got a nice upgrade with the sound card. Not only has the Sound Blaster Live got processing on the chip, so it takes load away from the processor, it sounds nicer of course, and it also supports EAX, which a lot of these games do support. You just have to go into the options and have a look under the audio settings, and usually it's called EAX or 3D audio or accelerated audio, and you just have to turn it on and you get a better sound experience and yeah, also better FPS. So definitely worth getting a dedicated sound card. NSF everywhere, JC. Your orders are to shoot on site. A UNATCO informant on the North Dock can get you inside the statue. Look for a bum. Identify yourself with the phrase iron and copper. Everywhere, JC. Your orders are to shoot on sight. A UNATCO informant on the North Dock can get you inside the search. Identify yourself with the phrase iron and copper.
So there you have it, guys. This is the upgraded Audi PC. Beyond that, well, we still have a few more options. We could have gone for a 1.4 GHz duality processor and maybe a GeForce 3, but definitely not in the year 2000. So that's something for another video. And that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, leave me some comments down below. I'm particularly interested in uh, your upgrade experience. Back in those days, you had to upgrade constantly. A machine you bought in 2000 was obsolete by 2002. So how did you go about with upgrading? Did you simply just lower the details and lower the resolution? Or did you just put up with low FPS and that's just how it was? Or did you, yeah, did you upgrade on a regular basis? How was your story? And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another video.